Women everywhere are misrepresented in the media, which leaves lasting impacts in, on their personal and professional lives due to the over-sexualization and objectification that women receive in the mass media. This gross misrepresentation creates an unrealistic beauty standards for society, which causes women and men alike to go to extreme measures to try and fit this unrealistic mold. One consequence of this being the horrific reality of eating disorders. Roughly 30 million U.S. citizens suffer from an eating disorder. This includes people of all ages and genders. Statistics show that often eating disorders stem from the media's portrayal of beauty. This creates a wide range of conditions that range from obsessions with food, obsessions with weight, and obsessions with appearance. Another issue that stems from the media's unrealistic beauty standards is the way that body image advertising seldomly portrays the bodies and appearances of the people the ads are aimed at. Now imagine this. The women portrayed in the media, may that be models, actresses, scholars, etc., are often very thin, tall women with long hair, when that is not often the reality for most women in the way their body appears. Models typically wear a size 4 to 6, whereas the average American woman wears a size 12 to 14. This showcases how the media portrays unrealistic beauty standards for the average American woman. Next, we take a look at how the media's portrayal of beauty affects women's work life. If you take, for example, an average workplace, an overweight woman is projected to earn almost 5% less than normal weight women who are doing the same work. This falls back on the social standard that beauty adds value. But it is also crucial to recognize that for men in the workplace, this weight pay gap does not exist. Men of all different sizes will receive the same income for the same work. For them, there is no correlation between weight and wage. Yet this isn't the only workplace inequality that women face. When we look at workplace inequalities, we see that women walk a fine line in their careers. In the early stages, they will see rewards for being seen as more attractive. But there is a switch when women start to reach higher positions where they are expected to tone back their beauty to be seen as more professional when they obtain leadership positions. These workplace inequalities that women face stem from the value placed on beauty in the media, along with stereotypes about women that the media spreads. Beauty. What is beauty and where does it come from? Beauty is a social construct. It is an arbitrary idea that our society has created. It has done so through the use of media and specifically TV, advertisement, magazines, social media, etc. These are some of the major outlets that the media uses to spread the sexualization and misrepresentation of women. The first media outlet to explore is TV and how TV creates unrealistic beauty standards for women that cause misrepresentation. What are you guys doing? I want to get my whole butt, the stretch mark and the cellulite laser that we're doing on my butt. I know I don't really have anything to do. Stop. No, because I got a tan, so I can't really do much. So you're just here to enjoy the ride? Yeah. Keeping Up With The Kardashians is just one example of a TV show that promotes unrealistic beauty standards and encourages extreme behavior to obtain society's expectations of beauty. Magazines are another resource that the media uses to promote beauty's social construction of societal norms. Magazines are full of extremely skinny women dressed in fabulous clothes, putting out the image of perfection. Magazines target women to show them the expectations that society is setting, when in reality they are not representative of most women. One of the most prevalent outlets that promotes society's beauty standard right now is social media. Social media is one of the fastest growing platforms that does not fail to promote unrealistic and unobtainable beauty norms. Do you use face? I don't use face too. God, I love you. <laughs> I, but then yeah. I'm like literally the most like face She does it history. for us. Like, yeah, we like, live through her. I do it for the culture. YouTubers and other social media influencers, like the ones here, are some of the worst participants in promoting unobtainable beauty standards. In this clip, we have a YouTuber admitting to face tuning and photoshopping her pictures that she posts on social media. She creates content for young girls to aspire to be like, knowing they never can because it's not real. She uses her platform to promote beauty standards that are unobtainable, like so many others do on social media. The last outlet utilized by the media are advertisements. Ads are one of the most commonly used propaganda tools that are used to promote societal standards of beauty. 
Ads are also some of the most used tools in regards to promoting the gross sexualization and objectification of women. These four tools are not the only resources that mass media uses to construct our societal understanding of beauty. They are just some of the most prevalent. To fully form an understanding of this social construct of beauty, I interviewed women in the community around me on their understanding of beauty. I asked them what beauty meant to them or what first came to mind when I mentioned the word beauty. So beauty to me is the way that you look and the way that you feel that things make you happy. Um, beauty to me is feeling comfortable in your own skin. So when I think of beauty, I kind of think of like the natural standard of like skinny, blonde, um, pretty. When I think of beauty personally, I think of someone who is happy and kind and thinks the best, wants the best for people. Um, but I think sometimes society views it as the appearance on the outside and has their, how they expect people to look. To me, um, at this point in my life, I think beauty is more being who you are and embracing that but it took me a long time to understand that concept of beauty. Um, I think a lot of young women have this concept of it as being more of a physical attribute. Absolutely. I then asked these women if they have ever felt pressure from society to conform to beauty standards in terms of feeling the need to wear makeup or dress a certain way because of societal pressures to do so. I feel like sometimes, yes, depending on like the situation, but I think that no one like judges you if you don't dress a certain way or don't wear makeup. Um, sometimes I do, but like as I've gotten older, I don't care as much. Sometimes I just feel like the pressure to conform to to society and wear makeup like everyone else does. Wear it like if I'm going to dinner or if I have a job interview. So like where I expect people expect to look better. Okay. I used to wear it every day in high school and now I wear it more um, on days where I'm feeling like it right. or on special occasions. There were no right or wrong answers to the questions I asked these women. The answers they gave me show how society has created this social construct of beauty and how it influences and affects everyone's lives differently. But what's important here is that the, at the end of the day, it does still affect all of us. We are exposed to the media every single day, whether we realize it or not. And this exposure ultimately creates our beauty expectations that we live by. Every day, women are sexualized and objectified in the media, and this ultimately leaves lasting impacts on the everyday lives of women everywhere. Marisa Salyers. Taylor Kenzie. <laughs> Sophia Stamatis. Abigail Birchfield. Margaret Nelson.